I know, and I wanted to get up and finish putting my flower, my artificial flowers in my plant pot <laughs> before the ground freezes. Mm -hmm. And needless to say, I never got to it. Yeah. Charlie went bowling today. Check for notes. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about. I do. Okay. <laughs> the school sometimes will go up 400. Yeah, right. Yes. Good. I count last night's school board, a uh, select board, the last four meetings, an average of 50 views per meeting. Per meeting. That's good. It's nice to know that all your hard work is valuable for people. Tell me about and be with us. And if you tomorrow night, right? And if you can't sleep, just turn it on on your iPhone for us for it. Just... <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Oh, I love How are you? So you have that you Okay, you can I, think I, do. I like your colors for me. Do you have coffee? <laughs> They're prettier. That's interesting. Hi. Hi, Bob. Yeah, so what are you doing? Oh, we'll wait. Kim's going to be the oh, cheese. Or yeah. <laughs> she? Jody's here. Oh, we need more Hi, Paul. How are you? Good, you? Emily, what are you doing? Cal, yeah. are you no. taking no. notes? No. No. I know. You're on the budget committee at the official. I mean, the school board. I'm going to get we all have our hands in different things, so we sure do have <laughs> No, because she is. Nobody knows tonight. Oh, I don't think so. No. Oh, he went. He went. Oh, and grabbed the tape. Jody can probably talk about tea. No. I'm good. I think she wants it. You know, even if she had a successful year, she's still I'm out of the loop. I don't know. Look how pretty that looks on the colors. Yeah, I if I don't have to give out extra copies of it, I just saw that. I need my help. All right, it's 6.30, so I'll call the meeting to order. Um, everybody's here except um, Frank Roselli, who is excused, as well as uh, Bill Irving. Both of them had other commitments tonight, and then I believe Kim is just going to be a little bit late. So, um, I think that's everybody. Um, uh, we'll start off with the, the minutes. Did everybody get copies of the minutes that yes. we circulated? Yeah. Were there any questions or comments or suggested changes? The, uh, the only change I believe, I'll have to look back, but I believe when I asked about the library, it was a 2% and not 3% for the librarian. Because she said she, she said she went with COLA. Which is what the town's going with, with is, is the two percent. Oh, okay. Because on the actual budget um, numbers, it looked like three percent. 
That's why I asked her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> the numbers were three. The number was yeah. That's that's what I thought it was a mistake, so I went back to that, and some of it was three percent. So. I'll, Okay, just um, leave it in that. But that that's what I that's why I asked. That's her. what's been submitted, so I'll just leave yeah. it that and we can deal with it. Um, okay, any other no. No. So you else want, want to have a motion to accept the well we'll start with the October twenty four meeting. Um, the motion to accept as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good, they're accepted. And then for the uh, 1128 meeting. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. So let's see. We still don't have anybody to take minutes, so that's what I'm doing. You did pretty good last time, Sean. <laughs> well, the, the recording is good, but it took me about five hours. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Yeah. And I don't know how long it took Bill to do to do his. He did he did last uh, last week's and I did the ones from the twenty fourth. Thank you. Because so. he couldn't find my video. Well, I had a recording, so it was okay. Um, so with that, we can move uh, on to presentations. And I had the cemetery up first. So you're looking at me. Uh, no, no. I got it right. Yes. I love that. <laughs> when I printed it up, it was like. Into an effect. 
sense again if if we end up doing that uh, some more of that and uh, I put a little bit more into the tree trimming snow uh, town and stuff uh, we did a thousand last year I put in fifteen hundred so. Uh, so it's I don't think I I think my budget is I think somewhere around the last five years has been the same four or five years it's been the same I haven't gone up I'm going up uh, I propose going up about seven hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, on the other page it, it shows what we spent in, uh, in mowing and trimming and uh, it shows the portion of, of the expense that comes from perpetual care that we can uh, draw and the portion that the town pays. Uh, I think we're going to run into a problem again uh, that we've been having all along. Uh, I haven't uh, spoke with Dana uh, Steers. He's a, with the uh, trustees of trust funds, and he, um, what's happening is that, again, like like I repeated last year, the interest is not uh, is not paying for the uh, the upkeep, the, the mowing, the trimming. So last year he suggested uh, to the selectmen, when the selectmen suggested that we don't uh, withdraw any money and pay the town their portion. So we left it there, and, uh, and I think he's probably going to. I just like I said, I'm going to this year, but I do. I think he's going to do the same. Want to do the same thing this year? So. Uh, now you're getting your every lot that you sell, you're on getting perpetual care. Right? Yes. Oh yeah. Awesome. And 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 I try to get perpetual care from the lots that the existing lots. Uh, we try to, what we try to do is uh, um, when somebody passes, uh, I wait uh, you know a couple of months and I get the address uh, from the, the family uh, from the funeral directors and in a couple of I let it set, settle for a couple of months and then we call them and not call them but send them a letter and we get a we get a letter all uh, laid out explaining the situation we're in. And, that they purchased uh, lots years ago without perpetual care mm -hmm. because it wasn't mandatory. And we're asking that uh, we're not. Uh, years ago, Ireland and Liberty had come up with a formula to take care of uh, uh, perpetual care for existing lots. So it, it comes out to about fifty dollars per grade. So that's what we asked the people that purchased lots years ago. We asked them. To at least start a trust and put fifty dollars per grade, in it. And, and most of them are, are you know, cooperative. Uh, you get a few that, that don't, and then we have to, you know, later on we, we kind of when the next burial comes around, uh, we try to tell them that we need to have that. It, it, it's been working out. I, uh, what I do now is I, I send out a uh, certified mail return receipt. That way they can't say they didn't get the, the, the information. So it, it's been pretty good. We've been collecting quite a bit. But now this year you see we, we collected uh, uh, on the next page you'll see that. Uh, perpetual care funds collected from non- but you'll get lots and all down. Uh, total of eighteen hundred dollars was added to perpetual care trust fund from the addition of perpetual care to existing lots. So what we did is we uh, uh, Four existing lots for a total of 36 graves. So there was four lots that we added perpetual care to, and then of course the ones we sold. You, when you uh, when you purchase a, a cemetery grave now or a lot, it's automatic. Half the money goes to the town for the lot, 
the other half goes into a trust. Can I answer a question just because I'm uh, not familiar with the process? There's, how, how does the trust fund work versus money from the town? Is it is it the, that um, you pay part of the budget through the trust fund, or how, how does that? Where where how does the trust fund money get used to support the maintenance and upkeep of the uh, there's, there's only certain things that you can use that uh, money for, and you you can only use the interest. You can't touch the principal. And, uh, every uh, every lot has an account, and, uh, which Dana uh, keeps track of. And uh, the, like I said, the interest on that, you can use it for mowing and trimming. So offsets some, some, of, some of the costs. Yeah. Just, just the cost, yeah, just uh, directly related to the mowing and trimming and the water and stuff. The rest of it you can't. Uh, you can't use it on uh, like the roadways and stuff like that. So um, then every grave, uh, we get a formula. We just uh, fill out this paper, and, and, uh, and every grave gets uh, charged so much. And that's a, that's why you you can see here that um, you'll see the portion of, of graves that. Uh, In, uh, in Newtown, there's more, uh, you know, you've got more graves in Newtown that are under perpetual care than you do in Old Town. Old Town, there's a lot of them that are not under perpetual care. So the graves that are not under perpetual care, the town has to pay that, uh, that portion of it. Of course, uh, the last few years, they've been paying the whole thing, so. Because the interest hasn't been enough. Exactly. Yeah. Now, perpetual care is a one-time deal? Right. Explain to me so because I'm new. Um, the interest in the past has the interest from the perpetual care account covered the expenses. Is that what uh, you mean? Year, years ago, I yeah. guess it used to when okay. the banks uh, paid a little bit more. I guess. Yeah. Uh, okay. On, uh, so we don't. The, so the town is putting more in to cover it so that the the balance doesn't continue to decrease. Right, because. Uh, because uh, if Dana goes in there and starts uh, uh, taking mm -hmm. too much, you can't take too right. much money out of each lot uh, because uh, you know then you'll be into the, into the principal, yeah. which is not allowed. And oh, it's not allowed at all to go into the principal. No. Okay. Yeah, just the interest. So whatever you get out of out of the interest pays for as much as you can pay for it, and the town supplements the rest, yes. whatever it takes. Right. To, to the rest. Right. So. But what is the purpose of not being able to use the principal? Where will that ever go? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure why. Uh, the reason why they set it up that way. Uh, I guess. Some kind of an RSA that says you can't do it. Right. Probably yeah. so that it keeps a. Right. If it's perpetual care, it's going to last forever. Right. Right. But you never use it. It'll last forever. It'll last forever. Yeah. Right. 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 Give a little more bang for your buck too. So right, right. Yeah. So it's going to change probably eventually. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> so any other questions? Um, my question is: so the urns and caskets is it the same same cost for either or, or is it? Uh, yeah. It, it, well, uh, as far as a lot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Uh, you, uh, you can you can still put urns or caskets in but any kind of lot. Uh, so in other words, if you buy a, uh, it's three fifty per grave. If you buy a, a, a grave in, uh, in anywhere in Newtown, except for the cremation area, I, uh, is is just for cremations, and that's three hundred dollars. Okay. But that's a single grave, but you can put three cremations in there. Got it. And mowing is staying the same from last year. Um, have they been pretty reliable? Uh, no, they haven't. Uh, no, that's one of the issues. And, and but, the reason, but they're staying the same, so, but not reliable. Yeah. Well, the reason uh, uh, we stuck with them last year, we were having problems with them the year before, and, and the reason the board, uh, the trustees, decided to stay with them because I had gone out to a couple of uh, other uh, uh, landscapers.
person talked to them and about getting the job and they weren't interested. So, I mean, you know, the way things, so uh, the trustees figured, well, we're better off to stay with him for now and, uh, and uh, yep. then, then be stuck without anybody, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, has to be pretty difficult to do. Uh, some I of mean, them, you're just some yeah. of them are just really. Uh, yeah. It, it so is. It's difficult, a, but it's difficult working with some of these people. Yeah. Some people don't <laughs> tell you. Well, some, some of them you got to go on private property to get to, don't you? Some of the grave sites. Uh, well, no, that's uh, that's uh, one of the other cemeteries we yeah. we take care of. Well, actually, it's not private property because we get a right away. You get okay. Yeah. Way, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we only do that one once a year. I mean, there's plenty of money in that trust. Uh, so the only thing we go in, we go in at Memorial Day, we rake the whole uh, cemetery and, uh, and trim branches, and that, that's it, once a year. So. Has anyone looked into um, having the town do it or themselves, or uh, is that a possibility? Or? I, <laughs> be great I, for me. I, believe me, but I, I don't know. That never had. No, nothing. Yeah. Because, I mean, we spend uh, it's thirteen hundred forty-five dollars for the mowing, and, uh, and we do ten mowings. So we only did eight this year, but uh, we usually do ten, ten mowings, and, and then we get the spring clean up in the fall to the side. Yeah. So, well, there was a few times, I mean, you know, you, you pull your hair and I'll deal with some of these guys, I'll tell you. Well, what's, what's the average rate increases per year for mowing? Uh, we haven't had any for a few years. But, yeah, for mowing. That's mowing cemeteries. Uh, and then they, they stayed constant that Well, he, he stayed constant uh, for the last couple of years. And, uh, so, but, you, know, you haven't heard what you expect for next year? No, I haven't. But he's not getting another set. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. You know, what I what I've gone through. Do is just cut out an extra moment. Well, yeah, if that, if that, if we have to do that, then we can do that. Well, we only did eight this year. It depends on what the sometimes it's Exactly. Exactly. One good thing about that. So, any other questions? Nope. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Okay, that's the right. Actually, we're continuing to close the gap. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've gone from we had four thousand dollar gap 
the year before, but now we're at 2,000, 2,200 yeah. right now. Yeah. So in, all that is because of lessons we're learning. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I could tell one of the missteps that we made I can bring up is um, we weren't structuring the tuition to cover at least salary itself, but we learned in the last couple of years that we need to increase tuition but still stay affordable. So that's what we're doing this year on uh, travel expenses. Um, there was, uh, obviously we're not asking for it much this year because of, you know, we overstated what we needed last year. Um, but, uh, well, are there any questions before I continue? I, I don't want to like over. That's fine. No, if, sure. you, if you want to give sort of a presenta <laughs> uh, overall presentation, that's great. And then we can ask questions if that's... Uh, no, so the total that we're asking for this year is $62,304, and that is between both Team Camp and Camp Raleigh. Uh, my piece of the pie, which is Camp Raleigh, is $48,786. Uh, again, uh, well, Camp Raleigh, and uh, that includes Family Fun Day, Thanksgiving, Winter Rec, Basketball, and Snow Program. Um, so I, I've already mentioned to you that we're, you know, uh, so we, we've done pretty well in the last couple of years. We are, we're closing the gap, we've got lessons learned. We've, we've done things like um, Jody was really instrumental in getting us a program that we're using, an online registration program, which is Sports Engine. It has pros and cons to it, but one of the huge cons is collecting data. So one of the things that we've gotten out of Sports Engine is we're realizing that we are now collecting more non-resident um, campus, which now the non-resident has a higher price point. So we know now that 34% of our campers last year were non-resident. So what are we going to do this year? We're going to market more to non-resident. We also captured where they live, who they are, so we know what towns and schools that we can go out to. Um, so it's just, for us, it's a bunch of lessons learned. Um, so yes, we are asking for $48,000, but I'm hoping that given the fact that we're learning lessons every year, we're cutting expenses, we're learning how to do that, is something that we have um, going for us. Do you have anything for team? For the team camp, we came in um, projected higher than we expected because we expected to have more in our age range, which we didn't. So partway through the season, we adjusted, and we ended up coming in under budget for the adjusted numbers um, based on what was actually received. Yeah, so we had low. We had low campers. It was our first year with this program. So we had to kind of mix with Camp Raleigh and do some do some programming with them to make um, it affordable. And um, I also drove my van, so that was <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, I volunteered my 15 passenger van, and um, that actually worked really well. I, I, we went on five trips, which um, if you look at our transportation costs, which is probably the biggest change in the team camp. Um, switch because it was only 800 and something dollars and that was, if, I think it's, well, I don't know how it prints it out, so um, 814.35 was um, was what I, we spent this year mostly because I drove on five trips, so I'm not saying that I'm not going to drive next summer, but that's what we're, if, if we took a bus every single time, that would be, that would be the finance on that. Well, I think she brings up a good point because one of the things we learned last year was the, the transportation issue. That's so we realized expensive. we were starting to go over budget a little bit. So we had to groom and figure out where we need to find this. So we just we buddied up yeah. and the programs got together and used one bus and that cut down on um, expenses. But again, as you go through the summer, you have to, you have to watch what's going on and you have to make your adjustments at the end of the summer, which is another other thing that we've learned, and I think we've actually did you know pretty well this yeah. year, figuring out how to yeah. buddy up and save the save, save the money. Yeah, because team camp, which we we almost canceled because we thought it was going to be a huge financial loss, but we actually ended up coming in on the plus almost two thousand dollars. And cover so, us, cover us. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a really nice little perk. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? How many uh, scholarships did you give out? 
We gave out two scholarships. We had received three. We contacted um, the suppliers of the scholarships, and one of the vendors that gave us scholarships said, it is fine to use it for whatever you need. So we were able to transfer that money into a more needed area. And I meant but we only had two applicants. Right. Two, applicants. So we got right. funds for three and two were given out. Yeah. Oh, I believe we all, we didn't turn anybody away. We had two no. applicants, correct? Two applicants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't fund the scholarships yourselves? You go out to get scholarship yes. money? Yes. <laughs> um, I kind of have a problem with that. We've what? always, the recs always supply scholarships on their own. What if you had five applicants? And would you not allow the three other kids in? Um, we, well, we haven't, come, we haven't come to that one yet. So We've had <laughs> fundraising <laughs> efforts, and the scholarship is the number one top of the list fundraising request. And then, um, we had late funding come in that we could have siphoned those funds to cover the costs of scholarships. It's just concerning that, I, I mean, I did rec 100 years ago, and um, it was, you know, we were always on the hot seat for having out-of-town kids here, even though they were paying more. Um, but I'm concerned that now we're marketing out-of-town to bring people in, but we can't even provide scholarships for kids in town that can't necessarily go unless you have somebody funding that other than your being, I guess. Well, well can I reply to that? Um, the, I don't think we would ever turn anybody away. We haven't had that, we haven't had that happen, and I can't imagine that we would. And I, and I was on working with the scholarships as, as a select board um, to keep it out of the hands of other people make sure that um, it stayed confidential. Right. So um, in the event, um, and I will get that cleared with the whole board to make sure, but I think that we would support children either by reduced rates or by a scholarship. I don't see why we wouldn't do that, but at this point we haven't had to, and I'm mm -hmm. glad that we haven't had to, but mm -hmm. I think that's something that I will definitely bring up to the board to see what their feelings are. That's, that's a whole good board. question. Yeah, I can't imagine that we turn people away. Go ahead, Nancy. Uh, I think that ha uh, part of the reason is is because now they have to self-fund themselves, whereas right. the town actually supplied money in past years for the REC, and now they have to be self-sufficient. As much as possible. As much as possible. The, the town used to pay for recreation, and now they're not. Correct. Correct. But the, at the same time, it is a town event. Mm -hmm. We've also expanded our options for enrollment. So instead of having to pay for the whole summer of eight weeks or six weeks, you can now pick a week. So if you know that you can't afford the whole summer or you know that you have vacations planned and you can't afford the full summer cost, you can pick, like I did with my children, three weeks or four weeks at $60 a week, which is less than what it costs for the whole summer. The whole summer was around 350 and for me to send my kid was $60 a week. So I send my kid for less than $200 for the summer, and then I could know that I could fund my family vacations out of state at the same time. So we've opened up different um, paying options too, so family wants to come for just a week. We're not supporting the staff and the facilities for the whole summer based on that. Can I ask this one more question? Sure. How many kids did you have? 97. Camp Raleigh. And team was... was there were 17 total in the team. So What's the age group in team? 12 to 15. Oh, that's good. You and had 17. that varied week to week. Yeah. Um, it was 17 total different kids, but each week was... Because they could only... They could sign up per week as well. So, yeah. And I think our max week was 15, 14, 14, 14 kids, yeah. and then our lowest week, I think, was 8. Yeah, 7 or 8. Seven or eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you say you guys wanted to market more or less than done right now? 
So I think it would. I got a two conflicting. Sell more, more than more. Right. Right. So because you get thirty four percent. You want to get like half or something like that. Yeah, it'd be not. Well, and and you know, it's to Michelle's point. If we did get more non-residents, that's more money we have to. You know, because we don't want to. We don't want to turn away any residents, any resident children. I mean, I would never do that. So. To that point, having um, more non-residents come in, that's more money for us to be able to support the kids if we do need more scholarships at some point. Uh, what's the capacity? For, are you anywhere close to what capacity you have? Or how, how would you deal with if you had too many kids that wanted to come in? Where do you cut off? So we're, when we first started, we had 120 capacity. So we're at 97 right now. Any more than 120, we have to start coming up. And again, to address the resident versus non-resident, residents come first. Yep. They have those slots first. And for the teen camp, uh, based on staffing, it, our um, capacity was 20 if they were staying on rounds. If they were going off for a field trip, it um, was 15 most times, 14 or 15. And we didn't have to also a teen camp the possibility of next summer. We only had one counselor run the teen camp because we had the numbers pretty low. So there is money in this budget um, for a possible second counselor in case we have um, a larger amount. And that's why the transportation cost is back up there in this budget for 2019, is that we would no longer be able to accommodate transporting the kids in a 15-passenger van. We would need an actual bus. And although we've looked extensively at a smaller bus, or through a limousine company, through rentals and stuff, there is just no way to get it at a reduced rate. And it, it, there's an average cost of what we need, $250 a day, to transport kids. And it's a full-size bus that will come and take 20 teenagers <laughs> to where they need to go just because we don't have the... It's not an alternative. There's not an alternative. But the more children you have in Raleigh as well, it makes you have another bus. Another so bus, that's right. another right. thing that we have to take. Yeah, we ran into that account. problem too this yeah. past summer that put us over budget that we needed to hire two buses to go to several of our far away, like White Lake and Patekaway, and so that that's another. But we expense. also, right, and we also budgeted on that though. With Camp Raleigh, we budgeted on that scenario happening again. One more question. So when you do your field trips, are the um, bus, is the bus included? Do you charge for field trips? Do you charge for the bus? Because I've seen it done multiple ways over the years. So we, we don't. This, year, this past year or two. No, this, this, last, this yeah. past year we did not um, charge for the bus. It's all included in the it's tuition. All included. So the field trips are free as well. I mean, do they pay extra? Well, well it's part of the tuition, tuition. rate. Yeah. Right. Uh, th that's all calculated in there based on per, per student, the okay. tuition so, rate. So they're paying for it indirectly, but right. they don't have to come up with the extra right. funds right. Mm -hmm. after the really fact that's all part of the mess when people were just dropping off five bucks on the day of the field trip. <laughs> it was a big mess. So it's better just to yeah. have it the tuition. <laughs> yeah. And kids can bring extra money when they go to White Lake and stuff. They have a snack bar, they have a gift shop. They can bring their own funds if they want. And the same for Teen Camp when they went to some of these places like Canopy Lake and um, stuff. They could bring their own funds to cover their food and getting a shirt or whatever they wanted. Those items were above and beyond what the camp paid for. The camp paid for your admission ticket into a said a venture and transportation. And transportation. Charlie? I got a couple of questions. First of all, I'd like to thank you because I know you've done an awful lot of work and you've come a long way. Okay, now yeah. the first question is what is the per person charge as it's gone up or what is the rates for each one, teen and Raleigh? So, we'll go ahead if you want. Sure, I could. So, we are going up 20 for non resident, uh, excuse me, resident for the whole entire eight weeks, if they decide to go for an entire eight weeks, we're raising at twenty dollars. Okay. So you've gone from three thirty to three fifty. That's for resident? It's for resident. Still affordable if you divide that by eight weeks. Completely affordable. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we extended our hours too two yeah. years ago when we first started, so it was more than it's the seven hours and yeah. 
to close to the six. So, um, so for eight entire weeks for non-resident, we're going up forty dollars. From what? From what? Uh, I didn't even ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had a certain amount that was but more than. I don't have in front of me. I don't remember. No, I, I believe it was a hundred. I believe it was a hundred dollars more. So it's that's for, for that's okay. I got enough Then the uh, Rollinsford kit. Yeah. It was a hundred dollars more, I believe. Right? So, so it's fun. going from four thirty. Okay. Four seven. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's just one child. We do have that tearing. You know about the tearing. And then, yeah, family. Yes. Yeah, I know. I realize the families are The team yeah. camp is staying the same based on this year. And what um, are those numbers? So, in town is $110 per okay. week, and out of town is $125 per week. And in 2018, we only had one camper sign up for all seven weeks. And it came out to be eight hundred and seventy-five dollars for, and it was an out-of-town person, so it was yep. eight hundred and seventy-five dollars for the whole summer. We only do it seven weeks. For yep. Seven weeks, yeah. and we want to try and keep it below, um, like a thousand dollars for a summer, and below one fifty because you can go to the surrounding communities and get into their camps for one seventy-five per week, and do the same things. Mm. Thank you. And the, one more question is, uh, of the council people, how many are coming back next year? Do you know? Do we know that? We're not really quite sure. No, we don't know that. No. We, have, we are looking for a new director if that, yeah. if that has happened. So um, January we'll start addressing stuff. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
he would like to do two uh, a lease this year and a lease next year, and to try to uh, just to have two new vehicles within two years to bring the mileage down on the other vehicles. So he's he's also controlling his mileage too because whenever there's a new vehicle, everyone wants to drive the new vehicle. So he's now assigned a cruiser to his. Um, police officers, so they will always have the same cruiser unless something goes wrong with them. So that's another way he's trying to keep his miles down. Um, the highway truck, um, George is here, if you would like, does anybody want to hear what he has to say about the... Well, uh, he came all the way here, we might as well hear him. Yeah, you want to yep. hear, George? When I started last year, uh, one, the uh, 2007 GMC was scheduled to be placed, and I decided to wait a year and see what it was, what the issues are with the truck. And we have found some severe issues with the truck. The truck was actually overbuilt. The truck was designed to be a smaller truck, and they made it like a big dump. They got the same size dump body and everything on that truck as the big truck and this truck is not capable of handling the load. You drive down the road, you don't know if you're going to be able to stop. It's got me mechanical brakes on it. You're hauling a wing and a plow and a load of salt. The truck's not safe for in, in the situation it's in to do the job it's doing. It has all it can do to make it up the hill is plowing because there's no traction. And I, like I said, I wanted to see what the truck would do, and the truck is tied. Dole McCann told me that last year when I started, that, you know, he's not a crystal ball, he don't read a crystal ball, I don't read a crystal ball. We lost a major component in it last winter. We fixed it ourselves, which was all the part of the hydraulics. The truck's, I mean, the salt started to take its course on the truck also. The truck is worth something to to a trailer park or something like that. We got a price on the truck, a, a trade-in value or, or sell. If we sold it outright, we could probably get $22,000 for the truck, which could be used towards, you know, putting it into the new truck. The new truck would be designed to do the job it's, it's, it's made for. It's, it'll have all-wheel drive. It's a smaller version of the big dump truck, so we don't, we don't have a lot of big streets in town that we need another big dump truck. So we're going to save by purchasing a truck that's about $40,000 less than buying a full size truck. The new truck has air brakes, which, you know, help you, you know, of course, it's a lot better for stopping and everything else. And it's, desi it's designed for the weight capacity the truck is built for. Not taking a small truck and putting bigger tires on it and a big dump body on it and making that truck do more than what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, I, so, mean, I can't basically, you know, that's basically what I can tell you. Okay. So we also, as a as voters, selectman, um, tasked George to go to another location to have, him, to have it looked at, just to get a second opinion on what we were hearing was wrong with the truck, and it was pretty much confirmed that what Dover was saying is, uh, it was Mick something. Yeah, Mick's um, yeah. And so we just wanted to make sure that it was a it was as bad as they said it was, and it was pretty much confirmed, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, we just wanted to make sure that we were being proactive to make sure that it was. So, and he did. And he, you know, he can't tell us really how much it's worth uh, right. to it's, it's, sell it. He wouldn't give us a, a, a price. But, you know, like George said, uh, anything that's flat, yeah. like you know, parts or something, it no has value. Drive, that truck would probably be fine. Yeah. I mean... A lot of people complain that the guy's driving the truck fast. He has to make it speed to make it up these hills. It's terrifying. You know, it's, uh, I followed him a couple times. I said, Mike, you got to slow down. He says, I can't make the hills if I slow down. And, I, and it's understandable. I tried it myself. It's, you know, that truck does the in-town streets, and it's designed to do, you know, I mean, it's designed to be a lot smaller vehicle. Right, doing, it's doing too much work for what the truck is designed for. It's got a smaller engine in it. It's, you know, it's... I tried 
to make it go with, you know, I, I took it for another year, <laughs> last year, and we're going to have to go through this winter because, of course, the budget doesn't get passed till March. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what's going to happen with this truck. How many miles on its way? The truck's only got 16, <laughs> unfortunately, it's only got 16,000 miles. And so they've had this truck for 11 years, is that correct? 11 years. It, it, it's not a lot of miles on a truck. I mean, and it, it served the town well for what, you know, for what they get out of it. I mean, it's, it's, now it's on the end of its life. It's, I mean, it's, as far as, I shouldn't say the end of its life. Uh, yeah, 16,000 miles is the beginning of any car's life. Right. It's, the, it, for what it does, that truck will not last, is what I'm saying. But it's lasted 11 years. It's lasted 11 years. And, um, so... I mean, if we, if we had all flat ground, this truck probably lasts forever, but this is... Not, you know. How did they manage it over these last How did they get by with that? The same driver's been on this truck, and he's been telling me since he's been here. It's always been, you know, he's had the truck is he's killing the truck because he's always going to give it full power, and you know, I can't tell you what you know. If the truck's going to last another day or two. I'm just telling you that the truck is not designed to do the job. It's not doing. It has done the job, but, they, but they've worked, they've killed that truck with, you know, doing that, what it's doing. So you're proposing spending $165,000 to get something different? It, it is a different truck. It's a truck that's designed to do the job. When is this expenditure proposed? It was when are we getting it? Yeah. It's, come, it's going to be, but it's... It was supposed to be last year, but we pushed it off one, one year. Well, yeah. no, Based on last year's capital improvement, we were putting we put thirty thousand in, and then thirty-five thousand in was slated for this year. And there's hundred six. There's a hundred and sixty-five in CIP for it. Okay. For it, so it's gonna it's gonna be covered by completely by CIP. Yes. Sure. So that means we'll have a big truck and a not so big truck, correct? And the not so big truck is the one that's being replaced. That's correct. And that's the one for the in town streets. A lot of the in town streets, you're right. What are we replacing it with? <clears throat> We're looking at a freight line with four wheel drive and a four season dump body on it. So the sand, the salter is actually going to be built onto the truck, so you're not adding it, that extra component. Give me a give me give me an idea like a dump truck is a ten ton and this will be like a two oh, ton or no, a five it's, ton. It's, it, it stays under the twenty six thousand GBWs that you need a commercial license for. Okay. So if tonnage wise, I I can't give you exactly. It's it's, it's in the sixty five hundred series. Okay. Is it like that a pickup? You. Is it like the pickup that we saw at the Jefferson no. driver room? No. No, not one hundred sixty five thousand dollars. No. It's it's uh. You have the 550, the, the small one he used to drive all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a size bigger than that, and it has a wing and a plow on it, and not just the front plow. And it's designed with these body, so they don't have to add the extra weight to the vehicle by putting a sander in the back. This part of the truck, the dump body, is designed with the sander in it. It becomes a four-season body. So as soon as you're done salting, you empty the salt, you can start hauling snow with the truck. And the salt is actually being distributed ahead of your wheels for more traction, so you don't have the issues where this truck is salting behind it and trying to make these hills. The salt that we put in front of the wheels to help you climb, you know, do your climb your hills. So this truck will be able to handle the whole town. It, we could actually do this town with smaller trucks. And I've said that since I've been here. We have. We do need a big truck when you're doing bigger projects and hauling material because you're not getting the same capacity as, as hauling material. Or we could rent trucks if we needed to do that. But in my estimation, the roads in this town are not big enough for a full-size dump truck with a wing. You're, because you're plowing over half the road when you, you know, with the big trucks. I'm trying to say with the smaller trucks, cost-wise, and uh, being able to stay on your own side of the road when you're plowing instead of taking up, you know, if you, if you brought the big truck into town, you could plow the roads, but you're taking up the whole road when you're plowing and you can't get by half the time. What do you project the cost savings to be with the truck? 
cost savings. Cost savings with the new truck? As opposed to buying a full size. Versus the full size? How much money are we going to save on that? You said you're trying to save us money. Well, it's going to be repairs. That's one of the things that you're going to save. You're, you're getting, right now, you're in the point that the motor's going to, it's, it's knocking a little bit. You know, you're going to get into putting a motor in a truck that 17, uh, I mean, it's 10, 12 years old. Uh, a diesel motor that's, you know, it's a lot of money. I mean, but, and you're still going to have the same truck. You're not going to have a truck that's doing, that can do the job. So as far as, I'm saving, saving money instead of buying another full-size dump truck, which would cost thirty or $40,000 more than it would be to buy a mid-sized dump truck that can do the job better for us. Uh, it's, as far as the 2007, the truck is tired and needs to be replaced. Like I said, I, I inherited that when I came in last year, and I just said, we'll try it for a year. We tried it, and we're going to have to do it again this year because we don't have the truck until spring, or if we get the, if we get the money. That's at, before the truck is built. So, yeah. I can only tell you what I've been told by mechanics, and I can tell you how the truck handles. So the 16,000 miles is not real, is what you're saying, because... It's, the, it's road miles. Right, but the truck, the truck is doing the, the job time. of a larger truck, which would therefore make the 16,000 miles not really be a true, you right. know, like Kim or I would think of driving a car for 16,000 miles. Because that mean, this just is sounds high terrible. Work. This is, this is <laughs> not highway <laughs> miles. This is, this is working miles. I mean, you can go to any highway department, it gets rid of a truck that's 10 or 15, 20 years old, and the mileage is less than 100,000 miles on it. We killed it. These trucks are in the most adverse conditions all the time. You're running salt through them all the time. You're running them when it's snowing. You're running them high because they're working twice as hard as they are because they're full of sand and pushing snow. I mean, these trucks are designed, you know, I mean, it's not like a car where you can go 200,000 miles. You know, this is not good miles for these vehicles. It's high working miles. But you have to make sure they understand that the, the truck that you have was not designed to do this job. You got that. It is a small one. Well, it, but it really, what he's going to get is almost the same size, right? But it's designed, it's designed to, do, the to job. do the job. It's so got the sure proper, you know, the that. more powerful motor in it, the all-wheel drive, and and the four-season void. Like I said, you don't have to add equipment to it. It's part of the vehicle, and you know, without adding, you know, weight. the weight, the extra yeah. weights to it. And is this new price? Yes. Yes, that's a new that's that's a right new price. price. Yes, that's the price I was quoted for that truck, even after the town meeting. Mm -hmm. That's how much money? That's $165,000. Okay, now what's the expected life of that? If you've got the thing sized right for the job that we had to do, and what's the expected and life of that versus what we do? What everyone says today, all the towns around, and the salespeople, and, and I'm just saying what the salespeople say. <laughs> a life expectancy in a highway dump truck, if you can get, I know in Berwick, we change dump bodies at 10 years old. So the trucks are starting to rot that bad at 10 years old. So if you're getting 10 years out of a truck, that's the time you should start thinking about, that's why they're looking at lease options. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. I would not, wouldn't want to trade a vehicle at 10 years old, but I've seen them. They, they're falling apart after going through the salt and this type of work at 10 years. So I'm not going to tell you you're going to get 20 years out of a truck, and they're not going to tell us that. But the life expectancy of the, of the highway department dump trucks is about 7 to 10 years, and that's why they're doing the lease purchases on most of them today. Is that because we only have like 16 miles of road? <coughs> that's correct. I agree so with you. Is that comparable to other towns? Is it only 16 miles in that life expectancy? Some of them do that much in one group. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right. Our mo no, our it, roads no are so we could pro we would probably get the 15. You know, I mean, that truck's not going to be used all the time. You know, it gets used in a winter time, and even that other one had been parked 90% of the time, which is not good for it either. You should use it more. <coughs> we use it a bit this summer to get used, you know. But it, again, when you take a small truck and try to do the work of a big truck, kill it. You give, you know, you release, you reduce the life expectancy of it considerably. Is there, um, 
when you're done <coughs> salting, does the salt get taken out of the That's correct. We don't, not leave the, we don't leave the product on the truck, and actually we wash them. Okay, we, we so, them out so you we, have a hose yeah. and you can get underneath And we have some salt reducing uh, spray that we yeah. can put on it to clean them. So the trucks get cleaned, you know, as soon as we're done with them. Actually, we, and we haul snow with the, the bigger truck. The problem with hauling snow with the small truck, which if I have the extra manpower, it doesn't take that long. We can take the sander up and haul snow with that too. I mean, I, I've done, I don't like to hire outside unless we absolutely have to. And that's why I try to use what we have for equipment. Mm -hmm. So you said the vehicle's probably not worth a whole lot? It's 20. In a trade in, they told me 10,000. So with that, selling it outright. Yeah. You can get 20 to 25 today. So if it's not really worth anything, why not just run it for a couple more years till it's done? Because, because we're, I mean, we're not going to get any yeah. money for it. But if we if we don't have one and this truck goes down, no, but it, are you concerned about the, its mechanical state right now? Is there something wrong with it? Yeah. No, I mean, mechanically, we don't know how long the motor's going to last. It's, like I said, there is a knock in the motor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it could last one stone. And so has that been evaluated by a mechanic? Yes. The, the, the mechanics have been system. telling us that the truck is getting weaker all the time. And they got second opinion. And, 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 and then we just put it out for second opinion. And the other problem is, like I said, the braking of it and stuff. It's, it's mechanical brakes on it. We've already had to do the transmission lines on it this summer because of wear and tear and rotting at 16,000 miles. You know. That's the actual miles now. That's actual miles on the truck. But it's probably the worst 16,000 miles any vehicle will have. Well, that's a, yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I don't think it's a true 16. It's probably... Right. I mean, it, it, when it's working, it's working at its, its hardest. But well, if, you if you size it right and that bought truck? a new one this year, what's the expected life on that compared to what we've been getting? You've got to realize one thing now, too. You used to do a lot more sanding. We're not doing sanding anymore. By recommendation of the state, we use salt. Salt is a lot less maintenance on, you know, your storm drains. You don't have to clean. Your storm drains don't get filled up as fast. So you're taking... There's all kinds of statistics that they have, and we've taken the classes that we were recommended to take to try to reduce the amount of salt usage, so, and, but it still use salt versus sand and salt in it. Trucks that are being used with salt alone are not getting the life expectancy that you're going to get. Like your cars, you're seeing the cars rotting out fast with the salt, and these vehicles are in it a lot harder than the cars. They live in it when it's during a storm, so they're, they're, they're eating these vehicles up. I can't tell you how much longer it is. All I know is from past experience of seeing the trucks are falling apart in about 10 years, you know, and replacing dump bodies, which is half the cost of a dump truck, and putting a new dump body on a truck that's 10 years old, or, you know, a little bit older, they're throwing good money against bad. And, like that, and a truck that's already underpowered, is, I just honestly can't tell you how much longer it'll take. That truck will last longer in this town than it will in Somerswick or Berwick or anywhere else because it's not, you don't have the miles, you know, you're not going to use it with the amount of miles that these other towns have. Is that correct? 16 miles is correct, right? Of road that we have to plow? It's 17 mi miles, 34 lane miles. Because, I mean, you've got two lanes, so. Yeah. Nancy, you have a question? Yeah. Um, it, it's it's a little more on if we do purchase this. I know that the police came in and said with their all-wheel vehicles, if one tire goes, they all have to be replaced. Is that the same thing with the truck? No. Okay. No. Do you have a question, Joey? I just wanted to make a comment about the truck. Um, when I was on the select board, um, it was one of the vehicles that had so much maintenance on it constantly. When George and Ed joined, they did a lot of the maintenance themselves, which we were very lucky to have. Um, that cut down on maintenance costs significantly. But that truck was always in the shop. And I don't know if any of you know it, but there was one point last winter 
was it the winter before? Um, all three trucks were down for three weeks. And we were extremely lucky that we did not have a snowstorm. We were, it was dead winter, it was like January, February. And all three trucks were out. And we couldn't get it back in time. And we were just praying that they were back before the next snowstorm. <laughs> so that's what can happen when you are down to two vehicles. And we have three. <laughs> we down to one last one, though. Yeah. In the big storm. Yeah. That was one that went down. And the little Ford went down. And we had just the international big truck. Since then, that was two years ago. since then, we manufactured a plow frame for the backhoe that we could put the truck that's down to plow on it and continue to be doing road plowing. And we've done a few other things so we could have the options. In case we have a breakdown, we'll have a backup. Uh, Can I ask about the tires? Because I was traumatized by that comment by Chief Duchamp last week. So why wouldn't your tires be the same as truck tires? Truck tires are a little different than uh, truck tires. Uh, a lot more plies in the tires and stuff like that. You, as long as you, you can actually run reruns, re retreads on the back of, of these dump trucks. Even though it's four wheel drive, not all wheel. It's drive. a four wheel drive vehicle, not an all wheel drive. Oh, it's okay. all wheel so drive. Said, like issue, all not the drive. drive. Okay, because all wheel drive is used as needed. Okay. No. Yeah. That's yeah. the difference. No, it's a difference. His is all-wheel drive, which right. I confirm. I have an all-wheel drive right. as well, right. and I had to do it. Right. So, yeah. but you're saying this is for and, okay. and, and that's a recommendation by these tire companies. It's a, it's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. <laughs> But I also think oh. that I think that with the police also they put a lot more miles yes. on, and yep. what it does Absolutely. is it throws off the whole balance right. of the right. vehicle if you've got right. one tire different than the other. I mean, you, I wouldn't go putting one tire, but I would definitely change some tires. Yeah, yeah. But you know, that's over and above the question. I mean, yeah. the, the well, truck. But uh, again, I'm bringing it up before we have a major breakdown. So, this might be an obvious question, I'm new too, but it, I'm trying to make sure I understand this. The Bobcat skid loader, it says $2,000, $80,000, is that when we bought it? And then there's a thing that says two Quonsy huts, $30,000. No, 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 we're not doing it. Those are on it, they're not the, being recorded. This is yeah. just what's on the this CIP. The okay, long. sorry. It doesn't mean it's going to be purchased. Yeah, 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 sorry, I don't need to use that anymore, my bad. Yeah. Now, the 80000 is probably what the replacement cost of that would be today. Alright. Okay. Well, right. if it's full, yeah, you're recommending it. Yeah, it's full. Yeah, it's full. Yeah, that's full. Well, when, when it's all said and fixed, because there's some issues with it, then everyone will get the whole one. But okay. it's not complete, yes. It's not complete, that's why you didn't get the full. Okay, I was going to ask that question. Yeah, it's because it, it's being worked on. Yes. Okay. So it needs dire need of help. Okay. Um, I'm done with the truck. If everyone else is done with I the truck, right now, yeah. I'm looking at the the, yep. the whole CIP now. We could talk about that. Well, we can't talk about the whole because I just told you we don't. Nobody no, has no, the no, copies no. of it. No, 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 no. For the 2019. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, my question is, is, do you know what's in the CIP for the amount of money in CIP right now as of the end no, of 2019? I don't have that with me because I don't have it. It's not a completed document, so. Oh, is This is what's in CIP for those projects. Okay. That's so not the total. How do you know what's um, ta the taxation amount is if you don't know the total? I know what what's in there for these items only. She's saying the total CIP, not just these what's items. What's in for all of the... The total total. The total oh, for everything okay. As soon as we get it, you'll on. get it. Okay, but yeah. this is what is proposed for this year, so this is the most important, is what we're proposing for this year. Last year's was $2.1 million. Last year's. That would be the That's, yes, I but I'm looking, I'm looking at Probably. actual whatever Suzanne sent out. That would, yeah, but then you would have whatever came out of it last year, so yep. it, is, it wouldn't be that. No, I'm, I'm looking at actual cash of actually what they have in the account now, not what oh, yeah. they plan on having in the future and what, what we're planning on budgeting for. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at what our beginning balance is right. 
subtracting mm -hmm. what we are going to be spending and what would be left, and then adding in the the one seventy nine for. That's what that's what I was and, looking for. And we'll have that answer before that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I have a question about the radios. Mm -hmm. So the radios, based on the <laughs> Yes, we are. Thank you, George. 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 Yeah. So, so why are we accelerating this and proposing buying them all, all 13 of them this year? Because they are having major problems with their radios and they are failing rapidly. How many do they have again? Uh, well, they they have the potential of having 30 firefighters on it and they want to have one for every firefighter. However, that's not what they're going to get at mm -hmm. this point. But these radios, oh, I can't remember what they said the age was on it, but... Um, it's like 20 years. Yeah, I was going to say 20, 25 years. They were um, done when my husband was chief with a grant and so but they're, they're old and they're not they're not reliable they can't in many areas of this town get reception they can't in many areas in a, in a building get reception to be able to hear so they're not repairable anymore because of the age and so it's become urgent that we need to buy as many as we can to start replenishing the old ones but how many total do we have now I believe it's either 25 or 30. It's in that column. It, they had enough. They have a they have a roster that they can have up to 30 firefighters. I, yeah, 25 radio radio. I think it's 25. But that's what um, that's his goal to have. It's 25 radio. It, it, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's got 25. Well, he, like some he of them has them, but a lot of them don't work. Right. Or they're not reliable. Do you know how many are malfunctioning? How many aren't working? A lot of uh, no, I don't have a number, but a lot of them are not reliable, and if they're all at the same age, so if these become non-reliable, then eventually these other ones will as well. So he is looking for for replacement. He they're just so expensive. They're like five, a little over five thousand each. So you know, it's just, but it is their lifeline, and we feel that that is something that we have to take seriously. I feel like I would need to know how many aren't functioning um, in order to, you know, kind of make a decision on whether this is um, a good approach. You know, my concern is this. Last year we spent half a million dollars on the fire department. Mm -hmm. This year we're talking about another hundred thousand dollars in the fire department. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but wonder if it's it's time to really consider um, forming a committee um, to, to investigate regionalization. Um, you know, we're, we're approaching, we're creeping up on, you know, $750,000, you know. Um, so I think it's important for the Budget Committee and the Select Board to really carefully assess needs versus wants. And I believe the Select Board did based on the Fire Chief's recommendation. Life safety is on the line, and I think that we have to take life safety very serious, and that's what we're doing. Could we get a number of how many radios? I will ask. And supply chain. So, so I thought the chief last last meeting was looking for. I thought he said he was hoping for like five. Five. That's in his budget. Well, in yeah, that's in his in budget. His budgets, this too. is an addition to his budget. Okay, He's got five in his budget because if one doesn't pass, the other one. Because default budget won't give it five or won't give many because it's a new item. Okay, it's because of SB two. So there's five in his budget. Operating budget, and this is through CIP. All right, so I got to ask a dumb oh, question. What's the ten thousand dollars? It says here portable radios offset ten thousand dollars, but then two thousand nineteen is fifty-five thousand. Ten's so coming, the, the, the ten's coming from CIP, and fifty-five is from taxation. So. Okay. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. thirteen radios, and then five in his budget. Right. Oh, not the full. Oh, it's not. It's not all of them. But I mean, he has some that works, but they're all at the same age. So. Well, and I think I mean works is kind of relative because if he's down on Front Street and can't get a signal, or right. a firefighter is down on Front Street and can't get a signal, even if the radio works, it's not working. I know, so and, and I understand about safety and everything, but we we also discussed that. 
maybe on a really good day he might have seven or eight five seven or eight firefighters that are out on call. So if we have seven or eight firefighters, best case scenario, the world comes down and there's ten of them. Why do we need that many more radios? That's, that, that's a good. That's well, a good he just put five on his department last week, so he is getting more people joining. I mean, he he, he had low numbers. He admitted that, and it's just a combination of many different things. But he's got he just had five new people go on his department last week or this week. Do you, do they bring the radios home? No. So if they leave work and go to a fire, they have to go to the fire station first to get their radios and yeah, they can't go to they can't go to the scene directly. Yeah, you have to be there. either on a truck or in the uh, suburban to be transporting down. You so don't take your own vehicles. So what do you understand? Well, you have to get your equipment anyway. Well, you have to get your gear. Yeah. So they have to stay in the station. So people have to show up to the station, right? To you get have to show up anyway. You have to get your gear. Okay. And he's like Paul said maybe six or seven people show up. So you're going to have 16 or 18, 18 right. radios sitting there? Well, there, not being there are some in the trucks as well. No, we're going to have probably about, on the best case scenario, we're going to have eight sitting there. Yeah. Not being used for no reason. That well, it's not no reason. Well, I, I shouldn't say no reason. What, what if but, you are at a scene for eight hours and your radio goes dead? You have to go get another one that's being on the charge or waiting for you. Well, that that's, has happened. That's, that's stuff we have to know about. I mean, well, I, I, mean, think, that, I would think they'd like take lithium batteries and last for a long time. You just yeah, boom, get them, and they're ready in about a half hour. I don't know that, but I, I would think. I don't know that for sure. You know, I mean, analog compared to digital, and yeah. so. So, so pull your mouth just to check this out. Um, you said there'll be eight sitting there, but that assumes that 17 people show up? Or no. I if we, okay. we're buying 18 radios, yeah. right? Yeah. The best case scenario, the chief said, is maybe we can get 10 firefighters to show up. Yeah. So if 10 firefighters show up yeah. and they use 10 radios, and we have 18 sitting there, it's going to be eight that's not used. That's my math. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Depends yeah. what time of day, it depends what the call is. Right. I mean, time of day, normally. You could have 20 people there, or you could have five. Right. But time that. of day normally is, you know, if it's time of day at 11 o'clock, obviously Chief's saying three people show up. Yep, because people and if it's work. time of day, it might be nine and everything's perfect, like I said, we mm -hmm. So I'm still trying to figure out the 18th. I mean, if we get 10, because we're satisfying, and it sounds like we're satisfying their needs, and then we get eight more next year and get 18. I'm just, that's something I would think about. And his goal is 25. So that's what we're aiming towards. Um, so the other thing I have to consider is that our calls over the last eight years are about half. Twenty-five. Well, no, I don't think so. Yeah, they're about, well, they're about have, average. No, I missed that. So eight years ago, we were up around 300. Okay. And in the last few years, we're down around 170 now. So why do we have so many people um, that, why do we have to have 25 or 30 people when our calls are about half of what they used to be eight years ago? Well, because you have people working different shifts and different jobs, and some can leave, some cannot. I mean, you have to have enough so you can be able to do the job. Unless it's a 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 job. You know, depending who he has showing up at the fire station. And you have to be able to get it, depending what the call is. And, no, but I'm you know, saying it's a small we're becoming call. just I mean, like yeah, you're only going to run probably on track. But if it's a big call, you're going to run everything you have. And you've got to wait for the people to come. But I mean, well, volunteer. It's a 30 people. Oh, it's not volunteer. It's not part -time. volunteer. They're, they're on, on call. On call. call. On call. Part time. No, we call them part time. <laughs> yeah. Part time. Part time. You can't say volunteer. Can I clarify? Can I get clarification? Like so, so there's an amount of money that, that, and this is not the CIP. This is the fire chief's budget. Mm -hmm. But there's an amount of money that he's asking for for paying, and we have it gets distributed quarterly, is what I mean. Mm -hmm. And so whoever shows up for work for that quarter. They divide up the money and, and pay it out. So it's not really no, a, well, no. They're, 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 every call um, is worth um, a dollar amount by the hour. So they get paid by the hour by a call. Okay. So if you, I mean, if you have 25 people in the apartment and only 15 of them show regularly, 
the other ten aren't going to get the same amount as the other guys That's who right. have income. Yeah. Yeah. It's based on who's there and yeah. how many hours you're there. But the dollar per hour is set. Mm. Or does that change? It didn't sound it like it. It, sounds sounds like it, was well, it, it, it is variable paid. because it's based on the position you hold. It, your officers get more than your firefighters. Right, but that's set. That's it's not it, like yes. There is a set. There is a set. It's not based formula. on the available money divided up. It's it's almost sort of sounded like last week. Yeah, sorry. that's exactly. Well, there's available the money. There's twenty calls. It's not going to get much. So, so he, he takes his more. budget and he divides it by four. Mm -hmm. But he has a he has a formula for it, and it's by the hour, that, or close to the hour. You know, so right. th they're. The people that are there are the ones that have yes. get the pay. If you don't show, you don't get any money. I get that. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't mean to apply otherwise. Okay. But, but but the amount that they get is different. Varies depending on how many show up and, and how many calls they have that quarter. Because that's what you said. Mm -hmm. and, and so you could get eight dollars an hour. You could get fourteen dollars an hour. It depends on how it. On how many people show up. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what, correct. That's what he and said. How many calls there week. have been during that quarter? Also, right. That is, right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not really paying by the hour. That is, that's kind of like a, a kitty that they're dividing up. Yeah. Well, they never were paid by the hour. It, they're just starting to get in there. But he, his desire is for them to eventually get minimum wage. That is where he wants to be by the hour. But at this point, I don't think that they're getting that. You know. Did have we ever? Excuse me. <laughs> have we ever figured out based on how many um, res uh, human resource hours we use what that would cost? I, I asked um, Mark for those numbers. Yeah, I think that's what Kim was asking. We did. Okay, oh, great. Yes. Yeah. But they also get they also get when they do other things like fire inspections and um, uh, uh, fire prevention at the school mm -hmm. and stuff. They get paid to do those events as well. Yep. It's not just on that code. same right. Just, rate, right? Or is that I'm not sure what the rate okay. is on that. But they 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 that's get same, that that's part of it. It's part of what they earn. So, the so people who do it. And yeah. the we can talk to the, we can ask the fire chief mm -hmm. for that. We we did ask for some clarification, mm -hmm. but I think what we were looking for is to understand what what how's that work? It's a little bit of a black box to, mm -hmm. to us right now. It's mm -hmm. nice to understand what that formula is, how many people are getting. And how, and how that divides up, so we can just—it's just hard to understand it the way that, the way it's being asked. I'll ask him and, to and get the increase that to is, us. You know, it's a larger percentage, so. Yeah. I'll ask him to get it to us by next week. Thank you. I know it's You're not welcome. your. Uh, well, I am a supervisor, right? <laughs> so to say. There you go. <laughs> so, what is? Um, do we have um, a potential tax impact yet for all of the spending? Uh, no, not yet. I, you know, I think that kind of has to factor into what we think we should move forward. Um, the point of making those decisions tonight, we're just, right. as soon as all of them are presented, we would definitely have to We'll have, have that then. before the Saturday. Absolutely. We, yeah. we should know the impact, though. We will. You will. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not making a decision tonight. No, what no, you no, 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 no. So, um, but you will have it before that making, time. Is. When are we making our decisions? It's the... Work, what was called the workshop, but there's the meeting after our January last January second. January second. January second. So we have to have the information by January second. Yeah. Sure. I don't want to. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to get it and decide five seconds later. No, of course. <laughs> no. But that's so what I like. But I like right after Christmas would be the latest I wanted. <laughs> yeah, and I think we have to but we're not meeting. Um, I don't care for meeting or not. I got to think about it. Oh. We have to factor in the potential new um, police and town hall administration. There's a lot of factors to consider this year when we think about, you know, needs versus yeah. wants. Well, this is the presentation, so that's the like needs that. versus what did you mean versus what you was the wants. Wants, Because we're we'll meeting in two weeks. We should have those numbers for that meeting. Sure. Sure. I'll see what I can do, Charlie. That's all I can say. Jody had her hand up for a while, sorry. <laughs> oh, she's just waving. Oh, you just have an elbow problem? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Um, why isn't CIP ready, for one? And it's two, not. okay, is is there another meeting? Is there... No, it, it's it's not part of the CIP committee anymore. It's now in the Board of the Selectmen's 
hands. Okay. And two, um, one of the things on the list was the cupola. Mm -hmm. um, we re-roofed that um, in 2016. That's not on the CIP. So, and it has 40-year shingles on it. So when you redo this part of the roof, the cupola won't need to be done. But make sure that it gets put back on the roof. I didn't take it off. It hasn't been on since I've been on it. Well, that's why we have the committee meetings. Okay. Okay. My, my, my quote is that you put, I just don't want, I want it on there so you know you don't have to do it for another, it has 40 year shingles, so let's say 30. Yeah, I had 30 year shingles in my house and they lasted about 15. So right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we had to rent the crane to get up there and so that, those were extra costs. So we want to make sure that that's on the, on the CIP. So just add it when you get to it. Is that the renovate third floor town hall? No, no, no. no. Just the peak of the town hall was re a couple of years ago. It's town hall roof. Which is a steeple. Yes, thank you. Steeple? Yeah. Um, so, can we still find out how many long left in radios they have? And, and total? Yep. Thank you. suggestion when, when this is presented last year. People didn't understand when they were uh, voting on some of the items that were coming out of CIP. So this is funded out of CIP and at the end we said, okay, well now we're going to fund CIP by X and out. I think just making that really clear mm -hmm. when the presentation is given because people, myself included, were a little confused as to when they're saying, oh, it's no, there's no impact, there's no, no cost, it's all CIP. Then it comes down to the end. And, oh, bring this into CIP. You're talking about the 176 will impact the taxes yes, yes. versus and I think what you're taking point, out. Yep. Maybe even at, yeah, making that point earlier on. Yep. Before, mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's presented before you present all the items. Mm. Right. I don't know if you can do that, but it's. Yeah, and usually in the past, what's happened is, is the operating budget is one, one pile of the warrant, and then afterwards, after the after the CIP and everything else is added, that's the total. Well, that isn't uh, that isn't what happened last year. Mm -hmm. The total was up in the line at before we before we voted the yeah. CIP in. No, it'll be a little different this year. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Do we have any other questions on the CIP? Yes. Okay. So you're saying we need to take seventy one nine to, to fund this year. So that will be a Warren article? Well, there's going to be a Warren article, I believe, on all of them. Isn't no, there? no, I'm, for this one, the 719. No, each of them No, each articles. of them is, will be Warren articles. Okay, but that will be the total. Yeah. That's the total, but yeah. all of them, I mean, you have to do a Warren article for every yeah, one of every, these. Yeah. Plus the one. No, this 179.4, is that going to be something totally different? Yes. No? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, I think that's what John was trying to do. Yeah. So it's yeah, that's what I thought. I just get that straight. Yeah. So it's 300,000 in addition to a $2.3 million operating budget. So we're talking yeah, six plus. So just to add to, you know, talking about presentation, I think it's important, too, to explain the importance of a CIP mm -hmm. because this town got into trouble by... Um, not putting money away, you know, and if, if the, of course the goal is to keep that level of, you know, every year you're putting in whatever, 200000 or whatever it is that you're trying to do to fund these projects so that when the fire truck breaks or the dump truck breaks that we don't have a $500,000 bill with nothing in the savings, you know. And people don't always understand that either. Well, and that's what I'm trying to get across to these um, these departments that have these big ticket items. Like Mark just got a fire truck last year, but you should be having one still on the on the right. CIP for the, next, for the next ten years or fifteen years when you have to buy another one. The same with you may get the dump truck off of it this year, but you're going to put it you're going to leave it there to project for the next time. So that they're not really they're not thinking about that that way. They're thinking about it maybe a year or two, and so we're trying to groom them to be right. a little so more proactive. Do it that way, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
and you have a steady, right. have a steady uh, progression up as well. So. But we did have, at one point, we did have a steady flow for the fire truck, but then mm -hmm. we ended up bonding it all. We did have money in the CIP for the fire truck. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we started soon enough. Right. But we didn't use any of it for the fire truck. It was all, we bonded the whole thing. So the money that was set aside in the CIP as a suggestion in the CIP was never used for the fire truck last year. So what happened to it? Yeah, what happened to it? I That's what I'm it asking. It must have been dispersed down through other, I don't know. That's why, I, that's why I wanted to know what the actual ending balance of 2018 for cash is in there right now to be able to pay what we want to pay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you could, so that was the same question. So if you know um, what that's going to cost and what you have to tax, then we know what the total is, right? Or are you not taking all of um, the money out of CIP? Right. If 231900 is coming out of CIP, mm -hmm. the total pricing for the, all of those projects is 303 yeah. So the difference is a 719 which would be taxation. There's so many left. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For the other projects that it would yeah. in the right categories of the other projects. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I just don't know what it is. I don't yeah. have that paperwork with me. So to I'm your point, sure you you're it. saying the line item for the fire truck should have gone or could have gone towards the fire truck and instead that line item got knows, dispersed must have been it might have been dispersed, dispersed somewhere somewhere I don't know I wasn't on there yeah, then, I so I don't know because I, I, I can find I, out yeah I had asked that with Suzanne and okay. yeah. the basic answer is what goes in CIP gets to get allocated wherever they want it's just a suggestion on where the money goes because well, that's true. true. Because priorities yep, can yep. take Priority pre change. precedence over something else that was projected. Um, cool. um, so, that, I mean, that is a true yeah. statement. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can do the CIP today, and tomorrow it's totally you, right. you can have a disaster and have to. Right. Yeah. I know there was some logic on that. No, yeah. yeah. All right, where are you? Pardon. <laughs> um, we have other questions on the CIP. Um, so we're, we're putting $15,000 away for a forestry vehicle. What's the difference between a forestry vehicle and a community vehicle we bought last year? Say that one more time. Um, what's the difference between a forestry vehicle, mm -hmm. which we're proposing funding $15,000 for, mm -hmm. and the community vehicle we bought last year? Well, a forestry vehicle oh, has a, well, mm -hmm. the current one has a side-on tank. So you can... You go out in the woods with the vehicle. The command vehicle you have, it just transports people. It doesn't have any kind of gear. I mean, it's a, it's a truck mm -hmm. with a slide-on tank. So, what kind of tank? Well, it's like a, they call it Africa. I'm not the fire department. <laughs> I mean, if you've got these questions, you need that mark. I'm just telling you if that's, if that's what so it is. Um, it would have been a good idea to have the department, all the departments here who were funding um, this year. Um, because we didn't have this when he was here last week. Well, true, but I mean, he's had a forestry for years. I mean, it's 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 not something new. It's 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 replacing something that is getting old and needs to be replaced eventually. But a forestry truck is a truck. It's not a it's not to drive people to the scene. It like the suburban or whatever it was that they got. That takes people additional people to a truck that's already on scene or for other businesses so using it to... So the vehicle that you're talking about from, from before was a actual road vehicle as opposed to this is one that goes in Well, it, 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 it's a forestry, so but it's, it's going to go into off-road off more off -road so than vehicles. a big fire truck can do. This is not a fire truck, though. it's a community vehicle, it's an SUV. No, that's what they got last year. Yeah, that's exactly. not what this is. Yeah, right. You're asking me what, what this is. Yeah. This is... It's a pickup with water, or with a water with a water back. tank, water right? Tank. And a and a, and a, sl a slide unit where pickup. you can bring someone who's collapsed in stock, uh, um, the stock, the Scout Land, Scotland, and help carry them back to the road. I mean, it has multi functions. Don't they have one though? Or is yes, they do. they do, but it's getting old. I mean, so it's very. It's old. They bought it secondhand for one, and it's just getting old. I think we need to just 
I think I disagree with it's too bad that she's saying. We were talking about yeah. this when she was here because of Well, it's CIP, uh, so it's what their needs are. We don't have the details of what it's going to be eventually when it's ready to be purchased. This is just putting money away for it. It's just putting money away for it. It's not buying it right now. No, it's not a part of the the post. Okay. If it was it's for a proposed purchase, well, maybe. Well, that, yeah, well, your maybe. proposal would be <laughs> right. right. That's what right. saying. We're saying just maybe. Um, yes, but, you know, Fox when 17. it's ready to be purchased, absolutely, you yeah. have the in, you know, info from the departments who are responsible. Yeah. I, thought, I, I, I was confused. So. Okay. Are we well, taking but this my point is that everything we fund costs money, money mm -hmm. you know? So I want to make sure that we're... Uh, we have enough details about what we're proposing to buy and what we're taking money from taxpayers for, mm -hmm. um, instead of just saying, oh yeah, they need it because it's old, it's starting to break down, without having any details about it. Yeah, but we'll, we'll, and that's what we would do if we were buying it this year. We would well, we're still, that, that money's still... What she's saying is we're putting money into it, yeah, which is part of the 176000 sure. But it's not So she's got a valid point, yeah. however, it's... At this point, if, because people hold him accountable for what they say, and what he says he thinks it should be for, you know, going forward, and it changes, and then people are going to call him out on it. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be careful what you say, because you get stuck. Well, that's like he bypassed the air pack, the air filling station. Right. Right, because they, they have another option. So it doesn't mean eventually he wouldn't want one, but he has another option. But I think the purpose of the CIP is you're putting um, money away for the, you know, all right, we bought this truck, it's going to have a life expectancy of 20 years, and we're going to have to buy another truck in 20 years, so we, in order to meet that goal, we need to put $5,000 or whatever it is every year in, regardless of what the current truck is doing. Right. It's, it's a means of saving for when you know the life expectancy of that vehicle or whatever it is is not going to be here anymore. So you're not doing it on a bond. Correct. Well, you're trying not to be trying on a Correct. And that was that was the reason why I had said that there was money, but it got dispersed okay. elsewhere. So these are suggested areas because they move it to where it, where they need it for that year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and that that's another concern. You know, we're saying we need fifteen dollars to fifteen thousand dollars to fund this for this year. You know, it's it's coming from all of us. And then it potentially gets you somewhere else. Some Within CIP. Within CIP. Yeah. So things become priorities over the other part of it, unfortunately. And, and that's so that warrant happens. article, right? What's yeah. that? And it will be a warrant article, yes. however it's yes. used. Eventually, when the expenditure no. comes, it's going to be a warrant article. Well, yeah, it's, it's going to have to be part of the ballot. At some, you know, maybe we could get more details um, prior to our workshop. That would be great. You know, the age of it, the issues, um, miles, you know, all the things that we've been asking for all the other vehicles. So maybe we can, how do we best get that to the chief? Is it, is it through you, mm -hmm. Denise? Is that the best way? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. our, last, our last budget committee meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, is the 19th. Of December before the new year, isn't it? I yes. Think. That's and that's that's the one where we have what all the town. work. We have town with water sewer. It's going to be a. It's in two weeks. Highway yeah. town. The next tax uh, town clerk and sewer and water is the nineteenth. In two weeks. And next week is school. School. Correct. Right. Yeah. And then that's after that, we have nothing until we go to our workshop and discuss. Yeah. Right. On this. What was that? Second. 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 Yeah. And uh, there are packages that we're going to have to have for next week. Sorry, anything more on CIP? I'm done. Are we, is it supposed to be something on the mailer? Is it supposed to be something for the mailer? That would be with the highway one. Well, that, that's not on CIP, though. We won't come on CIP. No. No. Or it's going to be a warrant? Yeah. Um, there's possibility possibility that we can buy it out right this year with remaining funds that haven't been spent. It hasn't been discussed. They haven't been discussed. It hasn't been voted on. Yeah, the next meeting, that'll make that decision. What made the boiler is going to be replaced this year? Next year. Next year. 19. I mean, that's the proposal. Doesn't mean it will happen. Any other questions on CIP? 
No. 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 Okay. Other business. I'll get you the info you're asking. You gotta ask Emily. When are we gonna get the budgets for the school? That's what I was gonna ask you. I'm not sure, but, but it's I gonna be ask. I thought Kate, Katie was gonna get them to us by Friday. She had said by Friday. Yeah. That's still the plan. I've asked her to get them to us by Thursday if she possibly can. Uh, I understand. Because that. Fridays the, a lot of people can. Yeah, some people I know. Can. And if um, for some reason she can't get them here by Thursday, then I will pick up whoever can't get here on Friday, Michelle, I know that you're one of them, and I'll drop them off to you. Well, if you ask her the question, tell them that the town hall is also on Thursday. It's only open from 3 to 7. Yes, I have let her Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, that was my question. It's a physical yeah. thing we're getting. Uh, yeah, it is yeah. a physical thing. I'm sure she has it digitally as well, so yeah. we can, you know, definitely get it's that. It's going to be the whole Thursday. But just to clarify, my mind. Uh, well, we're meeting tonight, next week. <laughs> yes. Wednesday night. Yes. Yep. Next Wednesday, Wednesday same time, same place. And that's going to the school yes. on the school budget. Yes. yes. And that's right. one night to do the school budget. And then the, the following we, week is the rest of the town. Rest of the town. Including yeah, water and sewer. They yeah, and water, water and sewer. And then the first hearing on the school and Public hearing or no, school in town, the budget workshop <coughs> is January 2nd, where we discuss e everything. That's where we discuss everything. Well, That's where we well, have no yeah, caps. Uh, budget. <coughs> Do you need one? Yeah, I'm going to have to tax impact for town and CAP. I don't know. That's it, because by it January will be before, you, before you make your decisions, I don't know. I'm not the one working on it, so. Okay. <laughs> Caroline, but it has to be approved by the board. <coughs> okay. Because we can't approve a budget that I we don't it. know the impact. I get it. Um, any other business or questions? Well, you do yeah. on face at three o'clock in the morning until you get it all straight. That's back. right. That's what we're gonna do. Don't push it in. Well, I think I've done that a couple of times. We've done that, Ed. You know that. I bet you did. And unfortunately, I went to work the next day. No. Do we, uh... I have we move. We Thank you. Move That's adjourned. what you're going to do. All in favor? Aye. All in favor. Just remember, it's at the school. Right? School. Yeah. It's at 630. Where is it going to be and how will it be in the building? It's a jam talk. Excuse me. Thank you. Well, actually.